So with that in mind, I guess uh, let's just jump into our, our first set of games. We're doing, I think uh, Sniper already mentioned, we're doing the B-team games for Team Beast and Chubbles with Attitude. So who are sure. going to be the two players we're starting with, Snipe? Uh, so it's going to be, well, we can introduce them when we get in here. Uh, we got uh, two Zerg players here from Chobos with Attitude here. In the bottom left, we have Eric Age. He's known for playing a little bit of uh, an orthodox style of Zerg. So uh, expect to see something maybe a little funny from him. And then here in the top right as our orange Zerg from Team Beast, we have Grez Ergri. Grez Ergri? Call him Grez. Yeah, Grez is uh, a lot easier for, for me as well. I prefer it. <laughs> is that what he goes by? I know, it doesn't matter what he likes. It's, it's what's easier for us, right? As the casters. Right. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so ZBZ. Um, what are you expecting here? Some links, some units? I'm expecting the game to be done before 10 minutes. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's pretty standard for me. Yeah. Um, honestly speaking, I think oftentimes in ZBZs, especially low, lower level ones, um, one player will try to... Or maybe both players will just mass lings and try to end the game as early as possible. Because I know, from what I understand, it's not really a matchup people look forward to, you know, like regardless of level. Because it's it's very very intense, very micro oriented, and if you you mess up just one like little bit, um, you know, you lose the game. So it's definitely yeah. a tough matchup. And there's definitely like some build order advantages or disadvantages too, right? Like. If you get your pool just slightly later, like one drone later, well, you're that much further ahead economically, and you're going to be fine against any pressure that they bring with their Zerglings, because you're going to have time to, with the defender's advantage and the time it gets there, you're going to be able to defend. So there's a lot of little things about, you know, drone counts, lane counts, uh, and just yeah. in well, general. Speaking of, uh, you know, building something one drone before or after or whatever they both both players get spawning pools at the exact same time um the only difference is grez has a faster gas so if you know i think it might be a big deal depending on when aggie adds his his because then you're gonna have a, a disparity in either you know uh speed link timings or layer timings and i think that yeah. could be pretty pretty uh, big factor for sure. We'll have to see if he wants to go for speedlings right away with his ga earlier gas, or if he's going to go straight up to Lair and Spire. Um, Aga threw down a second hatchery here just slightly earlier. Not not very much earlier, though. So their larva counts are going to be better, but the difference here is uh, Grezgri or Grez is going to have more gas. So I'm liking his position maybe a little bit better. Yeah, and for sure, we see his Lair already started. And the extractor isn't even done yet for Aggie. Um, so if this game kind of plays out longer and uh, Grez can just, you know, hang on to this lead in gas, it should give him a pretty big advantage going into, you know, the mid game or something if they both tech to mutas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, he should definitely be able to get his mutas out sooner. Uh, so it's going to be up to Aggie to kind of do something to either slow him down or stop that. We actually see Aggie going for a third hatchery here now up front. So I think he's probably just going to go really heavy on the lings here, like a three three hatch lings and just try and bust him with lings. Mm. I'm not sure if I agree with this type of strategy because from what I understand, if Grez was to send his overlord up here and scout the third hatchery, I think you know it, it would really signal to Grez that... Um, some something weird is going on, right? Like, there's probably going to be an all-in sort of link shenanigans. Um, so, if you were to scout that, I think it'd be pretty easily defended if he just builds like two sunkins. So, mm -hmm. it looks like he is about to scout this too. He's got an overlord flying, and he sees the first hatchery. And okay, now he sees both. So he should this should give him a red flag. Like, okay, this guy's got three hatches. So he's going to have more larva, but Grez is going to have the tech advantage with the earlier mutas. We got the Spire getting close to about halfway down here. Um, yeah, seems... so just looking at this, it seems really, really, uh, really good for Grez. I mean, he's in a great spot. His Spire is already halfway done, and the lair isn't even finished for his opponent. So, I mean, unless there's 
Um, like, I think, uh, oh. what's it called? Oh. Okay. Don't, yeah. Yeah, both players that. being pretty aggressive. Uh, yeah, I don't know about trying to engage up a ramp like that. Okay, I like this going around, trying to get around the lanes. Although, he should know, like, his opponent has an extra hatch and will be able to outproduce him, so I don't know. Uh, what he's expecting to get done with these links. So it's kind of a crazy position going on because Grez, yeah, he's in a superior, like, aggressive position. But, I mean, if all the larvae are used for Zerglings, Aggie can just overpower him, right? So I don't, I don't know if I agree with him being so uh, so aggressive. Oh. He, he should really just take advantage of his, uh, his tech advantage and sit back with the Zerglings. Um, mm -hmm. His Muta's already morphing, so... Yeah, he's got mutas on the way, and uh, Augie is going to start morphing a spore here at his natural, and he's placing down a couple of creeps in his main. I would expect to see that for some spores as well to kind of defend against these mutas. There's a lot of Zergen streaming in from Aggie, though. Uh, Grez does have a better concave, and the mutas just pop, but it's looking kind of rough for Grez, actually. Despite having the, um, despite having the tech advantage, I think... All the extra larvae that were that you know were used for zerglings, um, it's kind of giving them a lot of trouble. Like at any time, these zerglings can kind of come back in and backstab. So the mutas can't really move too far away. I think. Yeah. He did pick off one overlord, which supply blocked Age there for a bit. He's actually not even building another overlord at the minute the moment. That seems kind of delayed or a mistake. Like he should be. And zero reaction from oh, the Zerglings running no. in. He's going to lose so many drones. This is so huge. So he's already... There's a gas not mine, a, a drone not mining over here. He's already down one entire hatchery. And he just lost every single drone. He has one drone. Two drones. That's really painful. Now he's got to do some kind of damage. Oh, man. Uh, economically to Age. Or Age is just going to run away with this game. Um, and I don't think he's going to find the damage he needs. I mean, there's already a couple of spores at each base. This many mutas is going to have a hard time. Six mutas is going to have a hard time against, you know, four spores. Or this, two and two. This is an extremely tough position to be in because he's just... He has like a third of the, the, the drone count that Aggie has. So it's just going to snowball this game. Um, uh, it's good, yeah, to have, have uh, mutalisks, I guess more mutilous than your opponent but in this position where there's you know two spores at each base i mean there's there's not much he can do well and he's just giving his opponent time too while he's making more drones he's just kind of hanging around with his mutas not really doing anything to disrupt Age. meanwhile like Age is just getting further ahead uh grez does have an idle drone still sitting behind his gas too that he hasn't noticed oh, that's, I like to see that that's so huge I, I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out how did it get there because it, it obviously had been in the extractor before um, yeah, it probably ran it when the zerglings came in or something that's very possible yeah I mean if you just look at the, the supply counts right now it, it kind of tells the, the entire story of this game uh, Grez got way too far behind um, yeah that, those links just did him in like now he gave Age so much time that now Age has his own spire up. He's got more drones. I mean, he's just now matching the muta count. So any advantage Grez had with the earlier mutas is now gone, and he's behind economically, behind in larva, behind in bases. Like, I don't know. And I think Grez, um, actually, he is mining gas again, so maybe if he builds a set of Scourge, uh, he'd have some answer to mutas. But at this point, Aggie just has more mutalists, and if he A moves, he'll just win the game. I mean, it's it's just, it's pure, the pure econ difference is insurmountable. Yeah, he's just, you know, doing a little bit more damage to Grez, picking off that Overlord, supply blocking him. That drone's still just sitting there, a bit unfortunate. Yeah, that's got to be like, what, 300, 400 minerals of lost mining time? That, that drone could have been, been, uh could have obtained and now the mutas are coming in i don't think you know aga has or grez has an answer to this aga is just gonna clean up like he's got more 
more mutalisks at this point in time. Straight up muta fight, Auge would just win it. Yeah, at this point, Aggie's just running around between each base, and he's just picking off, you know, anything he can. He's already done way, way, way too much damage. And Grez literally only has one drone and not enough minerals to build another. And he, I don't think he notices that drone still. The same one sitting above the extra extractor. Ooh, so I'm not sure... <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's not really a big deal, but um, I think he used his last minerals to morph Scourge. Uh, oh, he finally found that drone. Yeah, to, to keep himself in the game, I think maybe building another drone uh, would have been helpful, but I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter. He can't really do anything uh, to stay in the game. There, and now he has no money, can't make any drones. He has no drones and no money for drones, so... I mean, He's gonna he lose has... his mana, mute a battle, and I'll tap out. There you go. And there's the game. A bit of a cut and dry, sort of a yeah. sort of game. I mean, the builds starting from like the pool timing was the same, but once Aggie sort of added that third hatchery, and was able to get so much damage with his zerglings, um, the game was pretty much over at that point. Yeah, like that was the main issue. There was. You know, Grez lost all his drones, or almost all of his drones with that Zergling attack. And he didn't do, like, any counter-economic damage to Age, so Age was just able to outproduce and out-macro him and eventually run him over. Yeah, so well played by Age. He seemed to have a pretty good understanding of, um, you know, the win condition and finding opportunities to sort of do big damage to the drone line like that. All right, well, let's see uh, how this game goes now. Let's see if Grez can bring it back for a game three. Uh, bottom left here, we have our Brown Zerg down a game, Grez. And in the top right, we have our Blue Zerg, Kirk Age. All right, so we got Circuit Breakers now. Cross positions. I mean, I don't think it makes too big of a difference. Uh, ZVZ on this map. Uh, it could allow you to go for something slightly greedier, but you're not going to know where your opponent is right away. What do you think? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, exactly as you said, since CB is just a, a bigger map, but um, you're not sure of which, I guess, which spawn your opponent's at, it's not really going to affect the strategy too much. I mean, maybe on a two-player map, like... Um, like match point that we were just on, uh, you know exactly where your opponent's going to spawn, so that might be easier for you to maybe decide to do a build like for a pool or something like that. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're seeing the exact same build from both of the players. I'm assuming they're going to go for like a. Do you think they're going to go for like 12 pool? 12 pool, 12 hatch? Alright, we got. So Age threw down a 11 pool, and Grez threw down a 12 pool. So just by that, I mean, the one extra drone, you say Grez has a slight advantage, but it's nothing like someone can't overcome. Uh, it looks like he is going to go for that quicker gas again, like we saw in game one, where Age is not. So we may see like a very mirrored situation here where Age just goes for the a slightly faster second hatchery. Yeah, it looks like uh, both of the players are doing very similar things to the first game. Um, hopefully, Grez is able to take advantage, like we mentioned last game. You know, he's going to have his gas much faster. He's going to be able to get uh, faster tech or faster link speed. Um, so it's really kind of maybe up to him to see if he can take advantage of it. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe uh, Aggie just understands the matchup better and he knows that he can get away with this, uh, this later extractor. Um, but yeah, so far it seems like Grez has always sort of had an advantage in, uh, in terms of gas and tech timing. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes back to knowing what you're doing with your build, right? So the fact that Grez is getting earlier gas and faster tech means he want, he needs to like use his tech advantage to his advantage. So use the fact that he's going to have earlier mutalisks 
to do some more damage to his opponent or harass him, kind of slow him down. And, I mean, the same thing, Aga is going to have a little bit larva a little bit faster. It's not going to be terribly faster in this case, but just the fact that he's going to have, you know, extra larva, kind of going to use that. And we actually are seeing that third hatchery again. So this is pretty much the exact same situation we saw in the first game. Yeah, so I am not too sure about uh, this maneuver that Grez is doing. He's, you know, posturing with, with uh, six Zerglings when there's already ten or is from his opponent. Um, if he's not careful or takes a bad engagement, he might just lose to a Ling counterattack. Um, yeah. So yeah. I mean, he looks like careful. he's just kind of poking a little bit, trying to get some scouting information, find out what his opponent's up to. He does, by being aggressive like this, he does kind of force a creep colony from Aggie, so that's good. Um, maybe if he had been a lot more passive and kept his Zergings at the at his net, uh, this wouldn't have been forced. So I guess at the end of the day, it um, it's a good trade for him, but I'm I'm just still not too comfortable. I mean, it, it's, it's a good move, I guess. If he can afford it, um, he can sort of keep Blue's Zerglings kind of stuck in a defensive uh, position. So The only thing like that's kind of risky here is if Age had gone for earlier Zergling speed, he could just you know run his Zerglings around and catch all of Grez's Zerglings and just take them all out uh, really efficiently and just put Grez behind. Yeah, and once again, Aggie's kind of going for his uh, the same build as last time where he's de delaying his, um, his lair tech, he's delaying... Is gas mining in exchange for a, an, an entirely, you know, an extra hatchery, basically. Um, so if mm -hmm. Grez doesn't sort of either scout it or do something to, to kind of punish Aggie for building a third hatchery like that, it's it's just going to snowball out of control, I think. Yeah, the, the extra hatchery of Larva. Grez, I mean, Grez, his fire is a little over half done now. Aga has no, nothing to defend with it. So Grez is going to have to, again, like we said earlier, find some damage with these mutas. Just because he's got to use, you know, his tech advantage. Uh, and we actually see, okay, yeah. Aga is throwing down the evolution chamber now after scouting. So he's going to be using spores for defense again. Yeah, so it's going to be a bit, it's going to be a bit tough. Because Aggie's just going to throw down, like he did last game, two spores at each base. Uh... Three, four mutilists aren't going to be able to do anything versus that. I mean, if you had, I don't know, an, enough to one shot a drone and your micro is really, really good. Oh no! You can start sniping stuff, but oh, and one ling just snuck into Grez's base. Got two drones, drone kills. One ling got two drones. Yeah. That's so huge, and he's kind of sending his drones back and forth, and that's that's rough. Because yeah. last game something similar happened, right? Like. A, b a bunch of Zerglings ran by and did a ton of damage. Um, this, combined with the fact that Aggie has access to just more larva in general, it does look a bit worrying, because I'm not sure if Grez has a proper response um, to what he's seeing from Aggie. For sure, and he just loses a couple more Zerglings there at the front of uh, Aggie's base. And now he's going to lose this Overlord parked over the Spore. Oh yeah, that's, that's rough. So if this Overlord goes down, Grez is supply blocked. Um, Aggie has a ton of Zergings on the map. Mm -hmm. We may see a similar situation as we saw, like just Aggie overwhelming him with Zerglings. He does have Mutas out, so he can use them to help defend. He just flew them over the Zerglings, and he's continuing to go, so maybe he didn't notice, but I would like to see him just start attacking these he, Zerglings. With he those definitely, mutas. definitely should have seen that. I mean... I mean, he's flying them away still. I don't. Maybe he didn't notice, but I would like to see him start attacking these zerglings with his mutas. He's just like spreading them around, maybe looking for stray overlords on the map or any stray units. And another zergling just runs right by, like twenty zerglings. Oh no! And it oh. pulled like half of Grez's zerglings into his main base. Ooh, this could be huge, right? Because now only half of Grez's forces are, are here. Um, Oh He's still goodness. gonna get a sandwich on them and kill up and clear up all these links. Yeah, it does force all the mutas to come back. back. Yeah, and I mean Age's making a bunch more links. He's sending across. Uh, are the mutas gonna see them this time? They're just gonna fly past them, right past them. There we go. 
Okay. He notices now. I'd like to see him start attacking them as he's moving back. But he yeah, should it's be like able Aggie's to just trying to overpower them. him with uh, pure Zergling, but I don't think it's going to be very successful. There's already five Muta on the map and a good number of Zerglings. Actually, there's actually more Mutas, but they're just not grouped. Yeah. So Gress right now is microing uh, five Muta, but he has like he has another four just AFK at his net. Um, yeah, he, he's definitely in a better position than he was in game one. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Age's lair is only about half done, so he's gonna have this muta advantage for quite a while. But I'd like to again, like I'd like to see him do something with it, just trying to pressure uh, Age a little bit. You know, pick off any stray buildings or units he can find. Yeah, I I like what Aggie's doing because I you know obviously he's kind of streaming in zerglings, and as he's doing that, he's forcing these mutalists to stay behind and, and be defensive. Um, the only issue is he's thrown away a lot of zerglings this game, and it's kind of evident. He has another hatchery entirely, but his supply is like 20 below just because he's thrown yeah. away so many units inefficiently this whole game. And he's also had to spend 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven drones were, were spent to build sunken and, and spore colonies. So it's right. he's not in too great of an economic uh, spot. All right. So now Grez is like looking around trying to find some damage. This is kind of what you got to do. Uh, poke around see if there's anything like you know picks off a leg there every little thing you can pick off for free it's a win right yeah definitely and again he has more muta sort of parked at his net um i think what might be helpful in a situation like this when you know you have such like superior air control rally the muta closer to the opponent's base right like instead of rallying them to your net um, Continue to ask, picks off a drone, another couple of lings. I'd like to see him like micro down that gas and kind of deny that second gas from Age, though, although he does have like a ton banked up. He has almost 1300 gas banked up. He's oh. actually doing that right now. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. I'm talking to him from the future. Yeah, I mean, if, if I know obviously it's very uh, APM intensive, but if Grez is able to do that, that will definitely help. Um, you know, solidify his lead because I think the most important thing in this matchup isn't really uh, larva, but I think the more gas you have, right? Um, so if he's able to sort of cut off half of Aggie's uh, gas supply, that's going to be huge. We actually have Aggie moving across with a lot of Zerglings again over to Grez's base. He does have like a decent number of lings here, and some up on the ramp and a few mutas to help defend. So we'll see how this goes, but oh, Hage's actually gonna go target a few drones. Yeah, this actually looks gonna get, oh, really good for Grez. He's even gonna get one. Okay, he got one, but that was a pretty good hold by Grez, yeah. Like he's 30 supply ahead. I'm really liking his position right now. Yeah, and the, the main difference this game is that uh, Aggie wasn't really able to get ahead with his overproduction of Zerglings, right? Like, he didn't do critical damage. Um, the mining uh, is looking pretty okay, not too great for both players. Um, just the biggest difference is that, like, Grez has 10 more Mutalisk. Yeah, if there was ever just a straight up. Again, though, he has so many units kind of just sitting at his net. I, I really think if he just control groups like one, control groups control groups them separately and attacks at once uh, he could definitely do a lot of damage um, that is pretty AMP, apm intensive though well I'm, I'm not asking him to do like the jadong thing where okay, you're, okay, you're doing gotcha. the, the muta micro for two groups i mean just just a moving them right like yeah in any other you. matchup in a pvt you don't want to be attacking with just one control group of dragoons yeah right? i gotcha yeah, yeah i gotcha yeah. uh aga is flying his mutas away like leaving his base pretty open if Grez notices, this, but Grez is also flying all his mutas uh, to the but mill here. the He's main now difference, Aggie has like four spores at each base to fend off any mutalisk attack. But there's, there's nothing for Grez. So even though Grez is 20 supply up and he's had the muta advantage the entire game, he's going to take so much damage from these muta. Yeah. I mean, he's going to lose all his drones again by the looks of it. Uh, he's yeah. going to go ahead and pressure into Age now. I mean, he's got a lot of units here. Maybe he can do something, but... Okay, Age's bringing 
back to meters, maybe not. You know, if he targets these these spores and focus fires them, I think he can definitely do a ton of damage and maybe just outright win the game. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, Grez is in a great spot. He just A moved to victory. Okay. Uh, I mean, Grez has lost all his drones again. Now I'm not too sure because uh -huh. there's, there's still another four spore colonies that need to be killed. There's yeah, a ton so, of new lists, though, for Grez. I yeah, think. I mean, Aga is gonna lose this natural but okay Augie's actually just gonna kill this fire and I mean Grez has no drones he has no mining going on right now so he's kind of got to win with these mutas right if he doesn't do it there's definitely gonna be big problems because Aggie's still mining he's still got gas he's still got his spire um oh yeah this is gonna be this is gonna be rough I think he just targeted down the overlord but yeah, and Grez actually is now behind in supply, and there's still two sport colonies up, and he's about to get flanked by 11 mutas. So it's it's looking pretty bad for him now. He's gonna kill off all the spores, but who's ha who has the better mutas here? It's that it's gonna come down to who's gonna win this muta fight, and it looks like Og is gonna come up on. Oh, it's close. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, though, there's still stuff popping out of these these uh, these hatcheries in the water. Oh, he was actually targeting the spire. Oh my gosh, you don't want to do that. So it's yeah, yes, it's nice you got the spire, uh, so he can't make any more mutalisks. But the whole time, like you're losing all your mutalisks, well, his are just getting free hits and killing yours. So yeah, you want to like deal it. with his first. I think if he wasn't targeting the spire. Uh, he may have won that fight and just won the game, but because he targeted the Spire, he threw away all his Mutalisk, and now he's just going to lose. And interestingly enough, so the entire time, Grez's Econ was just completely destroyed, right? So he, there's not there's no, like, reproduction or resupplying of his units. Um, he even had the upgrade advantage. I think he had uh, Air Carapace, and he still didn't take the fight. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, he, I think, honestly, I think if he just took the fight instead of targeting the Spire, he would have just won the game right there. Yeah, it's definitely but, a, a tough decision to make because at the end of the day, it's kind of like a toss-up, right? Because I'm not too sure if he had enough to take on all those Mutalisk as well as these Spore Colonies because there was, yeah. there was a lot of uh, static defense going on at both the bases. Yeah, I mean, as is Age, well played, takes the game down, uh, and a 2-0 victory for Chobos with Attitude. Yes, very nicely done.